morning, everyone. Our opening hymn is the first three verses of Amazing Grace, found in the bulletin, page two. I hope you join me in singing this very familiar American hymn. second book of Samuel. David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. David and all the people with him set out and went from Baali, Judah, to bring up from, the, from there the ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. They carried the ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab which was on, on the hill. Azar and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, were driving the new cart to the ark of, of God, and Ahio went in front of the ark. David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obedidom, or to the city of David, with rejoicing. And when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fatling. David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and he despised him in her heart. 
They brought the they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered great offerings and offerings of well being before the Lord. When David had finished offering the great offering and the offerings of well being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed food among all the people, the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people went back to their homes. The word of the Lord. Nice to meet you, God. Psalm appointed for today is Psalm 24, found on page 3 of your bulletin. I'll read the first half of each verse to the asterisk. Please respond with the second half, the words in italics. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. The world and all who dwell in For it is he who founded it upon the seas. And made it firm upon the rivers of the sea. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? And who can stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart. Who have not pledged themselves to falsehood, nor sworn by life to fall off. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord. And a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him. Of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates. Lift them high, O everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates. Lift them high, O everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Refuse her. 
Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Didn't that first reading from the Hebrew Scriptures, the reading from 2 Samuel this morning, make you feel a bit happier? Can you imagine the scene? David and his army have conquered the Philistines, a vastly superior force, and have recovered the Ark of the Covenant lost in a previous battle. The Ark contained the priceless tablets on which God had written the Ten Commandments given to Moses on Mount Sinai. The Ark took the place of a permanent space of worship when Israel was in the wilderness. It was the saving presence of God in their midst and the reminder of the covenant between God and God's people. King David expresses the joy of the Ark's return by wearing a linen ephod, which is one of the few vestments reserved for priests, such as the stole or chasuble worn by priests today. He could have worn his battle dress with a sword or his kingly robes and other emblems of power. Instead, David chose a priestly role, and in his dancing, he leads the people in the worship and praise of God. Can you imagine a king or president or a prime minister or even a, pri a priest dancing half naked in the streets with shouts of joy and trumpets blowing? Not only are they, and of course me, too dignified to do something like that, but most people wouldn't want to see their leaders scantily dressed and dancing on YouTube. <laughs> right? Perhaps, perhaps like David's wife, Cal, we might have some sympathy for her, who found David's unfettered joy unworthy of a great leader. Cal looks down in this game. She is the daughter of Saul, the text tells us, then doesn't tell us that she's also the wife of David. The daughter of Saul, the king, until David defeats him. To understand her reaction, to empathize with her, we need to remember that Michal loved the young David but has now seen her father and her brothers killed in battle. She was married to David, she loved him, uh, when she was young. Then when he was exiled, her father married her off to another man. Then David, when he was king, brought her back to his house after he had married a younger woman with whom he had had children. Michal hasn't been able to conceive, and so in this patriarchal society, she is no doubt looked down upon. So she and David have a complicated past and present. What is left to Michal than a sense of her own dignity? To find self-esteem in being the daughter of one king and the wife of another, and wanting her husband, the king, to show that same dignity. However, by her disdain of David's enthusiastic worship, she manages to cut herself off from a meaningful relationship with God. Now, the Bible doesn't cover up David's sins, the ways in which he also at times separates himself from God. But always David repents and returns. We find the Psalms, some of which David himself composed, so inspiring and helpful because they reflect the range of human emotions, praise and thanksgiving like we heard in the Psalm today, which might have been sung at such an event like we heard in the, in the uh, first reading, the sense of going into the temple, this song, song that we just said, may have been one of those songs that were sung. 
We find them inspiring and helpful because they do not only express faith and praise and thanksgiving, but also sorrow and anger and profound guilt and repentance and the joy of God's mercy and forgiveness. Yes, David, Michal, and all of us are human and sinful, but as we're told in Scripture, there is great rejoicing in heaven when one sinner repents. And joy for us as well. Perhaps the angels join us when we decide to dance. David brings the ark to the tent where it remained until Solomon built a temple, Solomon and his son. David makes peace offerings before the Lord and then shares that peace with the people by throwing a dinner party for the entire nation. A cut of roast meat, a loaf of bread, and dessert too, a raisin cake. Everyone is happy and pleasantly full on this festive day. No one goes hungry. In this story, we can see the meaning of the word orthodoxy. We often think of orthodoxy as meaning just, you know, having a certain catalog of doctrines uh, that we have to adhere to. But it means literally right praise or right worship. Ortho, right, doxy is glory or worship. In our Episcopal Anglican tradition, we say that, quote, praying shapes believing, end quote, and that is more of what orthodoxy is. David exults in joyful praise and takes on a priestly function by bringing the commandments, the law of God, to the people. By mediating God's blessing and offering sacrifices of peace, he shares God's abundance, nourishing everyone's spiritual and physical needs. When worship makes us happy, happy to be with God and with each other, we are then inspired to share with others what we have received. We use our words to tell and our actions to show the good news of God's grace and love. Indeed, the pattern in the story of David can also be found in the Eucharist, which means thanksgiving. Only me or Dean as an ordained priest, but each of you as members of the priesthood of all believers are essential to orthodoxy. Your enthusiastic participation is essential to the right praise, the right worship of God, that produces blessing and abundance of life for all. Now in our readings this morning, the dance of David is bookended with the dance of Salome before King Herod, a dance that resulted in death, not life. Here the dance is not to the glory of God for the spiritual and physical sustenance of God's people, but is used to get King Herod to turn from God by ordering the execution of the prophet, John the Baptist, cousin of Jesus. Although Herod likes John and even protects him for a while, his action shows that in the end he thinks he can think only in terms of his position, his honor in the eyes of others. He is afraid of the disdain of his wife, his guests, and his people, fearful of being seen as weak. And so he shows little remorse. He's sorry, but he immediately orders John's execution. Later, he will have a hand in the execution of Jesus as well. Herod thinks that he has no choice to do what will maintain his position. But like David, he had a choice. And in both of these choices, unlike David, Herod is a king who seeks to glorify himself in the end rather than God. When we gather to worship as we do today, we imitate David at his best. We come together to celebrate the Eucharist with joy, to hear the good news of God's love, faithfulness and forgiveness, to receive the sacrament, and to leave happy and nourished for service to God and to the world. And we do this in other places too, when we stop for prayer, for attentiveness to the grace we find in everyday life. We do this when we stop to feel gratitude to God for love and life and faith. And out of that gratitude are moved to good works of generosity and kindness, justice and peacemaking, mercy and forgiveness. When we share our bread and meat with the hungry and offer a smile or a listening ear to lift up those who are cast down. 
So may we dance with baby. Right here. Well, maybe not dance exactly. Maybe just walk in love with a spring in our step. Let us dance with David and with the angels. Perhaps we can walk in love with joy and invite others to do the same. Amen. Creed is found in the bulletin on page 4 or in the Book of Common Prayer on page 358. as you are able. Let us pray. Generous God, giver of all gifts, we thank you for the example of King David and we offer you our joyful and heartfelt praise. We give thanks for the gift of life, remembering especially those in our parish family who are celebrating their birthdays in the coming week. Samantha Silver, Tucker Miller, Wilson Reimers, Donald Moore, and Kimberly Regan. We also give you thanks for the people and clergy of All Saints Episcopal Korean Church, Bergenfield, St. John's Bluton, Christ Church, Bluefield, Glen Ridge, and of the Church of the Philippines. And for the people and ministries of our companion congregation of Santa Maria Margarita in Colón, Panama, for their priest, the Reverend Ramon Toledo, and for the Right Reverend Julio Murray, Bishop. Healing God, we pray for the sick, remembering Vivian Chan Costa, Charlotte Moore, Jack Kronberger, Suzanne Costin Brown, Don Davis, Sydney Reimers, Wendy Fisher, Deirdre Corner. Susan Schink, Dick Wurr, Linda Jaxel, William Blackwood, Ron Clark, for those suffering from COVID-19 and those who care for them, especially healthcare workers in places where serious cases are increasing, such as in the state of Missouri. We pray for all who mourn, especially for Angie Rispoli and her family, for the families of the victims of the building collapse in Surfside, Miami, and for those still waiting for news of their loved ones. We also pray to you, God, for all others on our healing prayer list and those we name now, either silently or aloud.
Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace, we ask for healing for the people of Haiti, for those injured or grieving, and for a more just, safe, and prosperous country for all its citizens, remembering especially the Episcopal Church in Haiti. Eternal loving God, we give you thanks for the Easter promise of resurrection, and in that hope we pray for those who have died, remembering before you, Gabriella Rispoli, those killed in the building collapse in Surfside, Miami, Natalie Commissar, and the Reverend Robert Shearer, and for Zangoro and Toshiko Kona, in whose loving memory the altar flowers are given this day to your glory. And for all the departed, including those we name now, either silently, aloud, or silently in our hearts. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer, and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 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 Others stand as you are able. And Margaret and me. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please share a sign of God's peace. Peace. Morning, those of you who are here in the chapel and those who may be watching now or later, uh, we will be worshiping with you, uh, sharing the joy of the Lord with you. There are a number of announcements in the bulletin. I won't go through them all, of course, and I hope that you'll read through the bulletin, whether you're here or maybe you sent it out to everybody uh, by email last night, as we do every week. Uh, there will be an additional service today at 6 o'clock. Uh, in the Memorial Garden, or if it is raining back here in the chapel, um, just to give an alternate time for a few people who come during the summer if they cannot get here in the morning. Other announcements are there. We do have, just want to remind you that Quiet Day now has been moved. The date was moved from this coming Saturday, July 17th, to Saturday, July 31st. Please RSVP, not to me, but to Pat in the office, who is keeping a list of those. Uh, who will be wanting to attend. Yeah, I don't know if there are any other announcements that need to be made verbally at this time. Yeah. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. We will not, as usual, be taking an offering during the setting of the altar, but we hope that you'll give electronically or after the service. During the setting of the altar with singing, come thou fount of every blessing, found on page five.
Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. We'll close our worship today by singing Lead Me, Guide Me Along the Way. And uh, those who are here have their uh, inserts with the actual music because some of the verses were missing in the printed version of the bulletin. Those who are watching online have the revised version. It was sent out yesterday. But if you have the one that you picked up today, hopefully you'll have also a piece of music. And if you don't have it, Sagey has one for you. So let us sing Lead Me and Guide Me Along the Way.